Okay, General Chemistry Podcast 6.2. Now we're going to be looking at the empirical gas laws. So this is going to be describing quantitatively the functions and the actions of gases. But before we can do that, what does empirical mean? Well, empirical, this is all information that is gathered from data or from experiment. So these are actual experiments that were done um, at one point, physical data gathered, quantitative data gathered. Uh, and what it showed is that gases have very distinct distinct relationships between different qualities and we're going to be quantifying those and looking at them and the first one we're going to look at is Boyle's law and this has to do with the fact that gases can be compressed or they can be squeezed while liquids and solids are incompressible so this is way back uh, into podcast one when we talked or not podcast one specifically but unit one when we talked about phases of matter so gases can be squeezed down while liquids and solids are incompressible. And what Boyle's law says is that pressure and volume are inversely related at a constant proportion. So if we're looking at this on an xy plot or on a chart, we're going to say that pressure is on the y-axis and volume is on the x-axis. And what this means is that as I have a high pressure, I'm going to have a very low volume. So this is low... So at a high pressure, I'm going to have a very low volume. So I'm way down here. At a very low pressure, oh, I'm sorry, I'm up here. At a very low pressure, I'm going to have a very high volume. So my line goes from the top left to the bottom right, inverse of the relationship. This is like the mountain picture. So back in the first podcast when you had uh, altitude, V, pressure, and as your altitude increased, your pressure decreased. So this happens opposite of one another. Very high pressure means a very low volume, okay? Uh, mathematically, we can represent this as PV equals K, where P equals the pressure in atmospheres, and that's important. We need to set our standards. And V equals volume in liters. And K is called a proportionality constant. And what this says is that this changes at a specific ratio, or it changes at a specific rate. And because this, this relationship here, this PV rate, is constant, you can solve for a new volume and pressure, much like molarity. So if pressure and volume of one system are equal to K, and pressure and volume of another system are also equal to K, that means we can set pressure and volume of one equal to pressure and volume of two. And this is what we're going to be using most of the time. So I want you to skip over to page four, and we're going to look at an example one. So I'm on the bottom of page four now. It says a balloon at sea level has a volume of 1.5 liters. And if the balloon's maximum volume is two and a half liters, what pressure will an atmosphere will cause the balloon to pop? So this is a Boyle's Law question because I have a volume here and a volume there. And then it's asking about the pressure relationship. Remember what I said about sea level? We know that P1 at sea level is equal to one atmosphere. Okay. So if we're looking at a relationship P1V1, equals P2, V2. I've got P1, uh, I've got V1 and V2. I'm looking for P2. So this is going to arrange as P1, V1 over V2 equals P2, just like your molarity question, and one V1. So P1 gives us one liter, or I'm sorry, not one liter, one atmosphere. Got to get my units right. And the initial volume is 1.5 from the question. And this gets divided by my new volume. 2.5 liters. This is the final volume. This is the maximum I can have. So looking at this, we know that liters cancel out, and I end up with a pressure of 0 0.600 atmospheres. So that tells me once I reach this pressure, my volume is going to exceed the maximum capable uh, of the balloon to hold. So this is the pressure at which my balloon is going to pop. And we can change this to tor, millimeters of mercury, whatever we want. It doesn't really matter as long as we uh, keep track of our units while we're solving the question. The next empirical law that we're going to look at is Charles' law. And Charles' law says that temperature affects, uh, let me see, the volume of a gas. Temperature affects volume of a gas. And it's because of the KMT, or the kinetic molecular theory, right? If gases are moving faster and faster, they need more room to spread out for one another. So as we increase the temperature, the volume is going to increase. So Charles' law says that the volume of any gas at constant pressure, so we're keeping pressure uh, neutral. So this is like multiplying by 1. It is directly proportional to the absolute temperature, and absolute temperature is in Kelvin. So we're looking at this relationship now, V equals Bt, where V is the volume, 
temperature in Kelvin, and B is another proportionality constant. So V and T are going to change in a ratio with this B uh, number. Uh, like on the last slide, we saw that temperature is always given in Kelvin, and that's extremely important because this is an absolute temperature. It's not on a relative scale. And because the relationship is constant, we can perform calculations again if the volume of 1 is equal to the temperature, I'm sorry, if the volume divided by the temperature is equal to B. So all I did was rearrange, remember your gas law says V equals BT. Solving for B gives me this V over T, and we can put that V over T again, and we're going to be using this guy. So again, I need you to turn one page over, we're going to look at example 2 now. It says the total oxygen volume in a container at one atmosphere is 21 degrees, so T1 and 785 liters, so this one would be V1. What would the volume of oxygen be if the temperature were 28 degrees? So this is T2. Don't let the pressure throw you off. All this is saying is that we're at this pressure. It's not changing, right? It's just, this is constant pressure. So nothing has changed about pressure. The only thing that's changing is the volume versus the temperature. Uh, so if we're trying to solve, we're using V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, looking with this being a proportionality constant in the middle. So this needs to rearrange to V1, T2 over T1, and this is going to be equal to, uh, what are we looking for, V2. We're looking for a final volume. So filling in your variables again, volume 1 is 785, and this is liters, and that gets multiplied by temperature 2. That's the important thing. You have to be careful to multiply by temperature 2. So I'm looking at 28 degrees Celsius, but your temperature is in Kelvin, if you forgot how to uh, convert to Kelvin, this is degrees Celsius plus 273. So we take 28 plus 273, and that gives me a temperature of 301K. And that gets divided by my final or my initial temperature back up here, T1. So again, 273 plus 21 gives me 294. And carrying this function out, it gives me a new volume of 804 liters. And that makes sense based on Charles' law, right? If my temperature increases from 21 to 28, then my volume should also increase, okay? So we can do some, just, oh, does this make sense or not questions after we do this, just to check. Okay, flip back again. Uh, we're going to look at this last one. It's called gay Lussiac's law. He was, another, he was a Frenchman, and he looked at the relationship between pressure and temperature. And again, this relates directly to the kinetic molecular theory. And what he said is that the pressure increases the speed, and because of speed, the collision frequency, collision frequency, both of these increase. They both go up, right? So if I'm moving faster, that means I have more chance to hit the container of a wall more frequently. Uh, and this shows a higher temperature reading, so my temperature is going to increase, okay? Uh, so the volume of the gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature, and this says P over T. What this should say, I'm sorry, I did not catch this. This is the pressure of a gas, not volume. That volume and temperature is Charles law. So this is the pressure of a gas. I really apologize for that. So the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. Uh, so as pressure, or as, I'm sorry, as temperature increases, the pressure will also increase. You'll see the same backwards. So if you increase the pressure, your temperature will also increase. And again, we have a proportionality constant here, which means we can solve, we can do P over T is also equal to P over T. And it's like this is the final. So P1, T1, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And then finally, we have a third example, and this says that a cylinder of nitrogen gas has a pressure of 10 atmospheres, so this is P1, at 20 degrees Celsius, T1. What is the pressure if the temperature increases to T2, 50 degrees Celsius? Again, remember your, your temperature is in Kelvin, and this is degrees Celsius plus 273 to solve for that. Uh, so if we have P1 over T1 equals P2, over T2, we can rearrange to solve for P2. That's the only thing we're missing. And so we end up with P1, T2 over T1 equals P2. And then just filling in your variables again. So my initial pressure is 10 atmospheres. And that gets multiplied by T2. So 50 plus 273 gives me 323 K, 323 Kelvin. And all of that gets divided by T1, so 20 plus 273 gives me 293K. 
Kelvin cancels out and you're left with an atmosphere pressure of 11 atmospheres. Uh, and again, we can change this to tor, millimeters of mercury, whatever we need to. Um, so I went through this real quick, but really all of this is following the same rules as the molarity and everything is in a ratio to, of one to another. So be able to, to read these questions and uh, see what it's asking for, what is staying constant and what is changing, and that'll give you which gas law to use. So we've got Boyle's law, which looks at the pressure volume inverse relationship, Charles law, which is the volume temperature direct relationship, and gay lussacs law, which says um, that pressure and temperature also have a direct relationship. So again, you've got some critical thinking questions that you need to do, and there are um, some reading in the text and some textbook questions that will help you out. And there's a worksheet, again, at the back of the packet that will help you with this. So again, uh, rewind, slow this down a little bit, look at the, look at the information, then you can ask questions in class as you're working on these problems.